Hi guys, welcome back. Today I am here with another book haul. This is a combination of books I've been sent, books that were birthday presents because my birthday was in the month of May. I've got some pre-orders and I have a lot of book outlet books to open up. So let's go ahead and get into this. Um, yeah, it's exciting. There's a lot of things. Also, I sold some books to my local indie bookstore this month, so I had some store credit and picked up some stuff from that. All right, so why don't we go ahead and start with my pre-orders. There were four of them this month. First up, I have two books by one of my favorite contemporary romance authors, Alyssa Cole. We have A Prince on Paper. This is the latest book in the Reluctant Royal series. I've already read it. It's fantastic. And the paper bag version of Can't Escape Love, which I read last month and loved as an ebook, but I'm collecting all the paperbacks. So I now have a complete collection of the series highly recommend. Love. I have two other pre-orders that came in. The first one just came in recently. This is We Hunt the Flame by Hafsa Faisal. I'm so excited to read this. It's on my most anticipated books of the year list. This is a debut YA fantasy and it is own voices for Muslim representation and this has been everywhere. Also it's such a pretty book. I mean the cover is really pretty but also like guys look at that naked book. It's absolutely stunning. I'm really really excited to read this. I actually am also on the waitlist for my library for the audiobook because some really really good narrators are doing the audiobook and so I think I might read and listen at the same time. So hopefully I'll get that in the next couple weeks and I'm super excited to get to this. And my final pre-order in May. May was like a big big month for books guys. Uh, this is Aurora Rising by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. I am also really excited for this. I've heard such good things. It is the beginning of a brand new YA sci-fi series with like a ragtag kind of bunch of misfits as far as I know. Most of the reviews that I've heard so far have been really really good so I'm hoping I love this. I am excited to read it hopefully soon so yay! Okay so those are all of my pre-orders that I have this month. Next let's talk about the books that I have been sent. So I have a couple of unsolicited books that were sent to me from Little Bird Publicity and Amazon Publishing at Link Union. The first one is a finished copy of Have You Seen Luis Velez by Catherine Ryan Hyde. Um, this one is coming out in May and this is about an unlikely friendship that develops between a woman who was a German Jew who escaped the Holocaust and a teen boy living in New York City. Um, and I think it's supposed to be like kind of a heartwarming adult fiction novel. So if you guys are interested, go check it out. Thanks for sending me a copy of that. And then they also sent me another thriller. This is called Black Nowhere by Reese Hirsch. This is coming out September 1st. And um, this one is not so much up my alley, but some of you guys might be interested in it. This one involves an FBI agent who's tracking down cyber criminals who are selling drugs in like the dark web. Like I said, not so much my taste, but um, I know there are people who are really into this kind of thing. So thank you so much for sending me those. I appreciate it. And hopefully I can pass this one along to someone who will enjoy it. Then I have one book that I was sent from Quirk Books. I can't remember if this went in my last book haul or not, so I'm just going to include it here just in case. It was definitely on my TBR because I'm reading it right now. I'm actually just started it. It's really funny so far. This is Much Ado About Mean Girls by Ian Dosher. So this is the guy who did the Shakespeare Star Wars books, which are hilarious, and this also is hilarious. This is a rendition of Mean Girls, but in iambic pentameter with Shakespearean language. As a Shakespeare nerd, I think it is hilarious. I find this really entertaining. I'm enjoying it. I'm not, I'm like a third of the way into it at the moment. So I'm reading that right now. So thanks to Quirk Books for sending me a copy for review. And then I have two books that were sent to me this month from the Harlequin publicity team. One for review, one for promotion on Instagram. I'm planning on reading both of them. I'm really excited about them. The first one is Unexpected by Kelly Rimmer. I'm planning on reading this this month soon, hopefully. Both of these I'm planning on reading soon, but I'm really excited about this. I'm loving the curvy heroine on the cover, but this is about a woman who plans out everything. She's in her 30s and her doctor tells her that she, if she doesn't have a baby soon, she's not going to be able to. And so I think she decides to try to have a baby with her best friend and roommate and obviously things happen. So I think it'll be a fun book to pick up. So I'm excited for that. And then they also sent me this really adorable looking book called The Little Tea Shop on Main by Jody Thomas. I think I think this one spans more women's fiction with romance elements to it about three women who are friends and I don't know it just looks really cute. I mean look how cute the cover is. So hopefully both of those I can pick up soon and let you guys know what I think. I'm planning on reading them in May so thank you to Harlequin for sending me those for review. 
And the last book that I received for review this month came from Macmillan Kids. This is something I actually requested. It's an arc of a middle grade book coming out in September that I thought looked really interesting and the cover is stunning. This is called All the Impossible Things by Lindsay Lackey. This one has magical realism in it but it deals with the foster care system and it was just something that sounded right up my alley like something I would be interested in reading. The cover is stunning. I'm looking forward to reading this. I will probably be reviewing this sometime over the summer. Next let's talk about things Things that I was gifted or won. I won a giveaway and I also got some books as birthday gifts which of course I always really really appreciate. I guess not technically all birthday gifts but gifts in one way or another. Um, I'm just gonna count them as birthday gifts. One of my dear friends Amanda over at the Naughty Librarian got me a signed copy of A Duke by Default by Alyssa Cole which I love. I mean I already had a copy but I didn't know a signed copy and this is probably my favorite of the Reluctant Royals series so we have got Alyssa Cole in here Look, it's signed and personalized. She went and got to meet her and she also, I got these like super cute little stickers. I love it so much, which I'm gonna pull these out now that I've hauled this so I can put one of them on my computer, but um, yeah. Thank you, Amanda. It's so wonderful. I really hope I get to meet Alyssa Cole myself at some point, but I'm, it's wonderful. She had like a whole vlog where she got to meet her. Um, yeah, love, love, love this book, love this series. Highly recommend. And then the other thing that I was gifted was from another booktube friend. Mara over at Books Like Whoa recently took a work trip to London and while she was there did some book shopping and guys she got me something that she didn't even know was on my wish list. It is the UK paperback edition of The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. <laughs> Thank you! I love it so much. It's so beautiful. So if you guys didn't know this is one of my all-time favorite books. I think this makes like four copies that I own, but I did not have the UK paperback. I actually have the sequel to this in the UK paperback and I had wanted this, so it's perfect. I love these covers. They're absolutely stunning. Thank you, Mara. I love it. Yay. Like I said, I did actually win a giveaway that was being run through Tor. This looks really interesting. It's called Steeplejack by AJ Hartley and it's a signed copy of the book. So I think this is like a YA kind of sci-fi. It is signed. So thank you so much to Tor and Tortine for sending me a copy. I don't know a lot of details of what this is about, but it looks pretty cool. I like the girl on the cover. I feel like I've heard of this. So yeah, that was exciting. Thanks, Tor. Then finally, my wonderful husband, um, maybe I should show you both of the things he got me actually. So my husband, who knows me very well, got me a couple of things that I love. First, he got me this Captain Marvel pop figure. It's so cool. It's from the Captain Marvel movie. And uh, the cube in the box actually glows in the dark, apparently. So that's really fun. A plus on that. And then he really tried to find me a book that I would like but when he gave it to me he was like there's a gift receipt I don't know if you like this or read it um I so appreciate the effort it was not something that was like so much up my alley but I did exchange it and got a couple of other books instead so I'm going to show you what I got myself from my husband for my birthday the first one is a anticipated release for me for the year and it's gorgeous you guys I'm so excited for this this is with the fire on high by elizabeth acevedo last year her debut novel the poet x was one of my favorite books of the year i loved it i've read it twice now and both times like love so i'm really excited about this one i know this involves something about a girl who cooks and guys the cover is just stunning and if you haven't seen the naked book like seriously look at this look at this it's so beautiful oh my goodness so yeah i got that for myself which was very very exciting super happy to have that and then you might be surprised to know that i don't already have this but i also picked up a paperback copy of city of ashes by cassandra clare so i have been kind of slowly trying to replace these books some of them i just never owned i read them from the library but i've also been trying to slowly replace them with these paperback editions which i really like and i had been missing some so now i have book two i'm just missing books four and six and my intention is to try to do a reread with a reading vlog sometime this year because it's been a lot of years since I read the series and I think it would be pretty interesting to go back at this point and reread them so yay thank you so that's all my like birthday direct birthday stuff I guess um I did of course probably splurge a little bit more since than usual since it was my birthday month but also but also I had some um store credit. One thing that I actually bought in April but it didn't make it into my April haul because of timing is Heirs of Fate by Amara Luciano which guys um I 
really have a lot of love for this. This is a bind up of three indie fantasy novellas that I had read and reviewed and really really loved a while back. And then a few months ago I started working with Wonderheart Books, who the girls who published this these novellas and the bind up doing freelance publicity for them and so it's been really fun because it's a project that I'm really passionate about with diverse representation in the storytelling and I had always liked them already so it's been just really exciting this is the first actual paperback release and it's been great working with them and also um, I'm going to be recording the audiobook for this so yeah keep an eye out for that coming at some point. I'm really excited for it. So I have my own copy. I'm in the acknowledgments, so I definitely needed to have a finished copy of it. <laughs> Next up, there's sort of almost like a little free library type thing that happens in our building sometimes. Like people will just leave books that people can take and I've left books down there that I'm unhauling. And so I have a couple of books that I picked up for free that I'm really, really excited to have because they're both books that I'd been interested in having on my shelves. The first one is Children of Time by Adrian Tchaikovsky. And I feel like I saw a film based on this, maybe? I don't know. But this one, Book of the Year a while back, and I think the sequel either just came out or is about to come out. This came out through Orbit. It's like a sci-fi thing with the last remnants of the human race. Definitely up my alley, and it's quite a chunker. But yeah, I was really excited to find this. And it's in like pretty good condition. Like the back cover is a little bit bent, but like, yes, that, so that I found that, which is very exciting. And then the other one, I was like shocked that I found this, guys. It's a hardcover, like, perfect condition copy of Dark Matter by Blake Crouch, which has also kind of been on my radar as something that I've been interested in reading. This is another adult sci-fi that I've heard really good things about. And guess this is like, I think it's like a first edition hardcover copy. Yeah, someone was getting rid of, so yeah, those I just picked up for free. <laughs> so that's exciting, yay. Then I have a couple of other books that I had picked up at Barnes & Noble this month because I had some coupons going on. The first one I'm hoping to read this month, this is Volume 2 of The Ancient Magus Bride by Kori Yamazaki. I last month read Volume 1 in this, it was my first manga, I really really loved it and I've been slowly trying to collect all of the volumes. This one I went ahead and splurged. I did have a coupon so it wasn't full price. I got volume two so that I can read it. Most of them I've been finding on Book Outlet, but this one I just went ahead and got at Barnes & Noble because I hadn't been finding it. So yeah, I've been enjoying this. It's fun. And then the other book that I found at Barnes & Noble was in their clearance section. So I had a coupon. It was already only like six dollars or something. This is The Blade Itself by Joe Abercrombie, the book one in the First Law trilogy. This I blame on Leanna from Leanna's Library. She has been loving Joe Abercrombie and keeps telling me I need to read him. So I thought for such an inexpensive price I would go ahead and pick this up. I do also have another book by him, Half a King, that I want to read. So I think her and I might be buddy reading that sometime in the next couple of months, hopefully in June. We'll see how that goes. Um, he writes grim dark fantasy and I know she has been a huge fan so I'm very interested to give it a try. All right. Then, uh, last night actually, as I'm filming this, I went to the launch party for a book that I had read an arc of and loved. I think this is going to show up on a lot of favorite books of the year lists at the end of the year. I've been seeing so much buzz about it and it's well deserved. It's really, really good. This is Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. Guys, I got to go to the launch in New York, which was very exciting, and I got it signed. History, huh? Yeah, so she was lovely. I actually went ahead and filmed and vlogged it, so I don't know if that'll be up yet when this goes live. It might be. If so, I will link that vlog up above if you want to hear more of what she had to say, but I think this is fantastic. It is a kind of political romance novel between the biracial son of the first female president of the United States and the British Prince, and it's just really, really lovely. There's a lot of good things about it, so I'm really happy to have a signed copy. Yay! Okay, then I have some books that I picked up from The Strand this month, as I typically do, and then finally I've got like a giant book outlet order to share with you because, guys, book outlet has been like killing it with the deals and killing my b bank account, kind of. So a lot of these are actually because I have had store credit from selling back some books to The Strand, and so most of these I picked up on store credit, a couple of them I didn't, but they were really good deals. I had two paperback books that I found that they had for 50 cents each, they're used paperbacks. The first one is The Eye of the World by Robert Jordan. Um, so I read this a long time ago, I never finished the series. 
I kind of would like to at some point go back and try this again, although it's a little intimidating because it's such a long series, but I do remember enjoying it. I might try it on like audiobook, but I know my friend Jade over at Bedtime Bookworm really loves the series and has been doing a read-along all year long, so at some point I'd like to go back to this. And then the other 50 cent paperback I found was Lock In by John Scalzi. I like what I have read from John Scalzi, but a lot of his stuff I have not read. I don't really even know what this was about. Something about a virus across the globe. Um, I don't know. He seems cool and I like what I've read from him so for 50 cents I picked that up and then I have a couple of paperbacks that I found for like a dollar this one actually I might have gotten at Goodwill yeah I think I got this one at Goodwill this is The Crown Tower by Michael J. Sullivan so I didn't realize because I think I have somewhere Rise of Empire but I for some reason was thinking that this is the first book in that series but it's not it's the first book in a related series so this isn't actually quite what I was hoping it was but I still have heard good things about this it's like an adult fantasy series of some sort and I'm interested in trying it out I'm, I'm like a sucker for dollar books guys okay <laughs> Um, and speaking of which, another one that I found for a dollar was like a practically brand new copy of Tarnished City by Vic James. This is the sequel to Gilded Cage, which I have not read, but I do have it on my TBR. <laughs> so the sequel was a dollar. I really shouldn't be buying sequels when I haven't read the first book, but it was a dollar and I did. So yeah, and I had store credit for it. Okay, and then I actually can't believe I found this. This is not out yet. And I'm on, I am, I think, person number two on the waitlist for the audiobook for my library, but I'm, I have high hopes for this. This is Girl Gone Viral by Arvin Amati. This is coming out in May. And um, it is his second YA book, and I've been wanting to try it. This one sounds really cool. It's about a girl who does coding in virtual reality, and I think it's some kind of a thriller. I, I hope it's really good. I didn't do super well with the first book of his. I read part of it and ended up DNFing it last year, but I really like him as a person. He's really, really nice. And the premise of this just sounds really interesting. So hopefully this will be good. And then the last two books that I picked up, I found half price copies of. Both of these are books that I picked up based on the reviews of other booktubers that I follow because they had such good things to say about these books and based on their recommendation, I'm trying them out. So the first one is because of Melanie from Mel's The Any. She read this recently and had a lot of good things to say about it and I've heard some other early reviews that have been good. This is You Must Not Miss by Katrina Leno. This one just recently came out. I found a half price copy of it at The Strand and I'm excited for it. So I think this one is sort of a thriller with a little bit of magical realism to it. And I know it deals with feminism and sexual abuse of some sort, but I, I don't know details. So, and I've heard the ending is like polarizing. So I'm very, very interested to pick this one up. And then the other one is like the perfect summer read. So I'm hoping to read this sometime in the next few months because this sounds really fun. This one I really heard about from Madeline over at Novel Inc. I know she loved it. This is If I'm Being Honest by Emily Wiberly and Austin Siegman Broca. So I know that they are a couple that co-writes together. And this is a YA romantic comedy that is a retelling of Shakespeare's Taming of the Shrew, which sounds awesome. And she said it's really good. So yes. Found a half price copy, very excited to have this. And lastly, I have a whole bunch of books from Book Outlet. Um, so if you've not heard of Book Outlet, it is amazing, if a little bit dangerous. They have very, very discounted prices on fantastic books and they've been killing it lately. They've had a lot of great deals. If you guys are interested and you have not checked out Book Outlet previously, I do have a link down below that you can use that will save you $10 off your first order of $20 or more, I believe. I don't get paid for it, but I do get points that will give me a discount code to use on future purchases that I might make. So if you guys are interested, feel free to use that to save on your first order. Um, I recommend it, but use caution. <laughs> so. The first one I'm really, really excited to have. This has been on my wish list for a while, and I've been watching Book Outlet, waiting for them to hopefully get it back in. This is Nevernight by Jay Kristoff you might be surprised to know that I don't own my own copy of it, or I previously didn't. I originally actually read this from my library because I wasn't sure if I was going to like it. I do own two copies of God's Grave because somebody gifted me a paperback and I bought myself a hardcover. 
I really wanted to own this in hardcover, but I didn't want to pay full price, and they finally got it in for $10.29, so I now own both books, and I have pre-ordered Dark Dawn, which is book three. Um, I really, really love this series. It works for me. The writing style works for me. The humor works for me. It is very adult. It's very dark, and not everyone likes it. Like, it's kind of polarizing in a lot of ways, but this is about a 16 year old girl named Mia who goes to train to be an assassin in the Red Church so that she can enact revenge on the people who killed her family. So it's like, it's great. I really love it. So I now have my own hardcover copy, which is very exciting. I also picked up a book that I've heard good things about. I want to say I heard about this from Elliot Brooks. This is Blood Song by Anthony Ryan. It's the first in an adult fantasy series and this was $6.49. Um, I don't know much more than that. Then I picked up a graphic novel that I've been wanting to read. I've heard really good things about this. Mara from Books Like Woe really loved it, and it's actually a finalist for the BookTube SFF Awards. This is Adventure Zone, Here There Be Gerblins. Um, it's some kind of a graphic novel based on a podcast where people do role-playing games, like Dungeons and Dragons type stuff. Apparently it's really funny. They had this for $8.69, so picked up a copy. I feel like graphic novels are always so expensive, but um, I it's been hard to get a hold of other ways, so I went ahead and bought that. Next, I have been reading the Mara Dyer trilogy with my friend Cammie over at Cammie's Corner, and I have been loving it. I still need to read the last book in the series, but books one and two were both total five-star reads for me, and so I want to read the spin-off series that she's writing with from Noah Shaw's perspective. So I went ahead and picked up The Becoming of Noah Shaw by Michelle Hodkin. This was only like $3.89, guys, for a hardcover copy, so I am very, very pleased to have this one so I will be hopefully moving on to this once I finish the original trilogy. And then they actually had a hardcover copy of a book that I read from my library years ago and loved but um, didn't own. I own two other books in this series but I don't own all of them. They had Cinder for like $5.50 by Barissa Meyer which I've read this. I love it so this is not adding to my TBR to read but I would like to eventually own this entire series in hardcover. I really liked them a lot. I do own Winter and I own Fairest but I don't have the others. So I have Cinder, and I think I'm gonna keep an eye out for hardcover copies of the other two books in the series. I think Scarlet and Cress are the other two that I need at some point. But yeah, so I'm happy to have that in my collection. If you guys have been watching my channel, you might know that one of my favorite books that I have read this year is coming out in May. It's called The Kingdom by Jess Rothenberg. I do have a complete spoiler-free review, which I will leave up above if you want to check it out. But it was actually her sophomore novel, and I guess years ago she had written another book. It's very, very different, but they had it for like three-something on Book Outlet. So I went ahead and picked up a copy. This is The Catastrophic History of You and Me by Jess Rothenberg. This one it, I think is very different. This is more of like a contemporary heartbreak type book about a girl who's, but it still has some interesting things, like a girl who's dead but she returns and finds secrets and I don't know. I don't really know, but I thought, you know what, for how inexpensive it is, I should give it a try because I really, really love The Kingdom. It's one of my favorite books this year. So why not? Then I have another one that I picked up because it is a finalist for the BookTube SFF Awards. This is The Calculating Stars by Mary Robinette Kowal. Um, so I have also had some people tell me they think I would really, really enjoy this. It was $6.49, and um, this one is an alternate history of space flight where women become astronauts, and apparently it's really good, and it sounds like fun, so yeah. Then I found a duology that I've heard really good things about. They were only $4.89 each. This is The Red Threads of Fortune and The Black Tides of Heaven by Ji Yang. These are Asian-inspired adult fantasy, and I think the author is gender non-binary, and um, yeah, I've heard good things about them. I don't know details. I think they're companion novels, also they're tour which I have my little collection of Tor.com books that look so lovely together on my shelves. <laughs> so um, They were pretty inexpensive and they're beautiful, beautiful books. So I'm excited to have those in my collection. I feel like this is going to be such a long haul video, <laughs> but that's okay. As I mentioned earlier, I have been collecting these. I do have volume five of The Ancient Magus Bride. I think this was like 550 or something like that by Kori Yamazaki. So, um, and I think the last two volumes that I was missing, I have coming in another book outlet order, which will go in my June book haul. So I'm gonna have almost a complete collection. I think after that all I'll have left is volume 10 for the first full story arc. So 
Yep. And then rounding off my collection of the Murder Bob books, I have Exit Strategy by Martha Wells. This was $6.49. Um, and again, they're also the lovely little tour books. I really enjoy these. I've read the first two so far and I want to read the rest of them. They are about a biological AI called Murderbot who has tampered with his own governing unit and his adventures and he's like, they, I guess it's a they. Um, but they're just like a really, really funny character. I love Murderbot and I want to own all of these. This was the last one I was missing. I now own all of them. Next, I have a book that I also have already read, but I've been wanting to add to my collection. I'm planning on eventually owning all of the books by this author because she's becoming a favorite for me. This is Blanca y Roja by Anna Marie McLemore. So I originally read this in ARC form and really, really loved it. They had a hardcover copy for $5.99 on Book Outlet and I am happy to have this on my shelves. I probably will collect all of her books because I love them. This is Magical Realism. It is a retelling of Snow White and Rose Red as well as Swan Lake with sisters. It is queer, it is diverse, it's beautiful, lots of flowery prose. This is not going to be the book for everyone. It's very character driven with lots of really pretty writing, but I, I loved it. So I wanted to own a copy. All right, guys, we're almost there. Two more books. First one is a book by an author where I loved another book that I read by him last year. So Alex London wrote Black Wings Beating, which was on my favorites of the year list for 2018. I really, really loved it. And he has a previous duology that he has written and I've heard some good things about it. I had this for like less than $4 on Book Outlet. This is Proxy, which I think is like a sci-fi series. Black Wings Beating is fantasy and it is own voices for queer representation. I don't know much about this series, but I thought I would pick it up because I really, really loved his more recent work. And the final book that I picked up from Book Outlet is a beautiful Penguin Clothbound Classics edition of Paradise Lost by John Milton. Again, my friend Mara from Books Like Woe has kind of gotten me hooked on these, and they're normally really, really expensive. Like, yeah. These are, this is usually like $25, and they had it for less than $10. So I snapped it up, and I'm not upset about it. I'm happy to add this to my collection. I'm slowly accumulating some of these beautiful classics books. Okay, so that is it guys. Um, I know it was a lot of books, uh, kind of per usual. I'm a little, I think I need some coffee before I film anymore today. <laughs> so there you go. Those are all of the books that I received or purchased or was sent, some of them for my birthday. There's a lot of stuff I feel like this month that are things that I've actually already read. So I don't even know how many books I'm actually adding to my TBR. I mean, some obviously, but like there's a good number of books where I had read it and I wanted to own a copy. So I'm not upset about it. Yeah. Talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know any of your thoughts on any of these books. And for your question of the day, let me know which of these books you would be most interested in seeing me read sooner than later. Let me know. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.